Hockey is silly, stupid, and nonsensical sometimes, and that's part of why we love it. Abs win over the Anaheim Ducks 5 to 4 in overtime. Artari Lekkinen, Colorado has won the Stanley Cup. This game was absolutely all over the place. Had far too much ridiculousness for me to go over all of it in extreme detail. It's one of those games that you kind of just have to watch to get the full picture, but I'll do my best here. The first period looked a lot like two teams on a Sega Baba that were tired and didn't have their best game, which is exactly what it was, so makes sense. Here's the thing. Anaheim is bad, so it's not a huge surprise that the Avs break through first. These days, not very many goals start with some double Johnson action, but that's what it is. Jack Johnson, a great job getting into the zone and creating space. He drops this off for Eric Johnson to come down the wall. EJ tries to get this one in the middle. It doesn't go very well, but they get a fortunate bounce right to Nuke. Nuke has a little bit of space. He's being challenged from behind. He's heading towards the net. He tries to cut this across to the forehand. I don't know if he's trying to pass this or shoot this. I think he might have been trying to shoot it. But it works out as an unbelievably good pass. And JT, well, that one's free. So free he gets two tries at it to get it to go. After that goal, it was pretty much pure craziness all the way through the rest of this game. Anaheim takes three penalties in short succession, including one that's a double minor. The Avs get multiple extended opportunities on the five on three through the rest of the first period. And they do not score another goal. That's not for lack of effort or quality opportunities. The Avs hit three posts over that time. So they were inches away from this game becoming a massive blowout. Instead, it's a 1-0 lead for Colorado after one. The second period, Colorado actually dominated on the underlyings. Was by far their best period of the game. And yet, they technically lose the period. The entire first half of it was more futility from Colorado. Good opportunities, but puck not going net. Right as that feeling is starting to boil over and you're wondering if the Avs will be able to score again, that's exactly what they do. Avs are controlling in the offensive zone. Taves working out at the point here. He finds Gerard, who works it in down to Miko. Miko then does one ridiculously good move to just make the Ducks look silly. He cuts to the middle. And you really just get a lot of half-assed defense, to be honest with you. The Ducks do not defend this very well. Miko's backhand, you already know, is lethal. That is a goal. Yeah, Miko's backhand is still real nasty. And that goal triggers Bizarro World, where all of a sudden, Anaheim is the team that comes back into this game. Again, I think the Avs played a good period here, but Anaheim gets two goals in pretty quick succession. Anaheim's going to win a battle deep in the Avs zone here, and then skate the puck out back towards the blue line. Now, initially, this is fine here. Eller does a good job battling along the wall. He knocks pucks loose. He's just not able to win one here. But as this comes to the blue line and cuts across, Eller feels his job is done. He's expecting a handoff with with new hook here across the blue line to defend this player and that's just not what happens eller gives up on the man new hook kind of overskates it and is floating towards the neutral zone instead of actually defending the man and all of a sudden the puck is sent back into the zone and the abs coverage is just completely lost they're all cheating up the ice it's a one-on-one -on -one down deep in the zone and trevor zegras he's pretty good does some cute stuff for a little backhand flip and that's just a bomb of a shot the Avs are actually going to win a faceoff in the offensive zone. Miko collects it and is heading back towards his own blue line. And the problem here is Miko just doesn't have a plan. He doesn't know what he's going to do with this puck. And he just floats back towards the blue line. Keeps floating. Keeps floating. Doesn't find Taves. Doesn't throw it to the corner. Just doesn't do anything with this puck. He just skates it to an area of no effect. Makes no play. And then gets beat. And that creates a breakaway for Anaheim. Of all people, it's Adam Henrique. Miko just can't do that. It's just not good enough play. No two ways around it. And Henrique does a good job to finish on Frankie. Look, those two plays are bad. Terrible, certainly in the one that Miko makes the mistake on. But the Avs still played a good period. Those were really the only two major mistakes of the period that I can think of. The Avs just pay the price for both of them. Winning a hockey game is not just about playing well. Yes, you do need to do that. But as we all know, you cannot play a perfect hockey game. That's not reality. So it has to be about limiting your mistakes. Far too often when the Avs make mistakes, they blow up right in their face and become disasters. So I think there's an argument that the Avs maybe deserved better 
out of that second period, but they don't get it, and it's 2-2 going into the third. Let's face it, on paper, all the Avs have to do is beat one of the worst teams in the league for one period to win this hockey game. You would think that wouldn't be that hard. Well, it might not be, but... The Avs have a tendency to make things harder than they need to be. The first half of the period, the Avs come out and just don't look very good. And Anaheim makes them pay. Twice. Ducks once again working in the Avs zone. Initially, this is well defended by Comfer, really sticking to his man, making it tough to create any space. The drop pass here leaves it to Gerard, and Gerard does lose half a step here, but he's able to recover well enough that there's no way this is getting to any of the dangerous areas from Vertrano. He's forcing a shot from well outside. Yes, there is some traffic in front and things like that, but this is not a dangerous area that the puck is coming from, and it's not a particularly good shot, and Francois just can't find it. The Ducks get off to the races quickly off of this face-off, and they get up ice well, but this really isn't a dangerous play. It's a chipped puck down into the corner that is fully defended here. The Avs have their men. They even have McKinnon here for a potential late trailer. A puck takes a funny bounce right through Taves, right onto Pavel Francos, who makes the initial save, but the way the rebound comes out, it just kicks out, and you can't even see it, but it hits Sam Gerrard in the skate, and then kicks, flips up over Frankie into the net. It's it's just weird. This was incredibly disappointing. It felt like the Avs were not living up to the moment. They didn't show up when they needed to in what was a game that would put them in the driver's seat for winning the Central Division. In that moment, it was hard to have confidence in this hockey team. But after going down two, a couple of things happened. First of all, the Anaheim Ducks really, really wanted to lose this game. They were doing things like missing empty nets to make it 5-2 and taking multiple penalties in the last 10 minutes of this game. The tank job is in full swing there. But two, the Avs also forced some of those things. They did turn the wick up. They did start pushing and pressuring Anaheim in a lot of different ways. Still disappointing that it took them going down two for them to hit that switch, but they did at least do it. Those aforementioned penalties would ultimately be Anaheim's demise as the Avs would pick up two more power play goals in the third period. The Avs have two plays on the power play. Option one is Miko one-timer go boom, and option two is McKinnon one-timer go boom. I know I said the third period started slow, and it did, but by the end of it, the Avs outshot Anaheim 18-6. On the whole of the game, the Avs outshot them 46-23. to While there are certainly lapses and stretches of this game where you just straight up need better from Colorado, the overarching picture was a really dominant game from Colorado that probably shouldn't have been as close as it was. The Avs do it the hard way, but they squeak it into overtime, and I don't know if... Anaheim's front office is paying refs to make sure they lose games or what, but Anaheim also gets a call against them in overtime to put the abs on the power play. I've seen a lot of refing. I've seen it go for the abs. I've seen it go against the abs. I have never seen this many soft calls get called this late in a hockey game, particularly one that's close or in overtime and tied. And there's a decent portion of this that Anaheim did to itself, but Colorado also got pretty darn lucky with some of these calls. Never apologize, you take it when you're Colorado, but just trying to keep it on the real here. The Avs have seen plenty of terrible refing, and I think Anaheim got the short end of the stick by quite a bit in this hockey game. Anyway, the Avs go on another power play, and yeah, Nathan McKinnon remains very good at hockey. And over time, the Avs are going to go back to option two here, but a little added wrinkle. As Miko's working with it, he's going to feed McKinnon, but McKinnon, instead of one-timing that because it's a little too saucy, he gives and goes with Taves here. Taves with the fake right back to McKinnon, and the one-timer wins the game. You absolutely take the win. You need to move on from this one. The Avs need to find some more stability, and I think that will come with their lineup getting healthier, but just something to keep in mind. You have to level out some of those mistakes. That is the end of this game video review. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednvr.com for all of our coverage. I am Rudo, and it is fun to watch 100-point players.